So a quick review of Planck's Law. So for more context, let's go over a quick review of Planck's Laws from the uh, Wikipedia, just because it gives a mainstream narrative of everything. And so here's mainstream narrative of Planck's Law. So Planck's Law describes the spectral density, is essentially what we were doing, basically the density of the different types of wavelengths emitted. Uh, of electromagnetic radiation emitted by a black body in thermal equilibri equilibrium at a given temperature T when there's no net flow of matter or energy between the body and its environment. So yeah, basically, uh, there's uh, when you have the radiation inside, then it's going to emit uh, heat-based radiation outwards, and so on. At the end of the 19th century, physicists were unable to explain why the observed spectrum of black body radiation, which uh, which by then had been accurately measured, yeah, actually, yeah, measured uh, diverge significantly at higher frequency from that predicted by existing theories. In 19, uh, oh, yeah, 1900, um, yeah, Max Planck uh, her heuristically, or in other words, by trial, uh, trial and error method, derived a formula for the observed spectrum by assuming that a hypothetical electrically charged oscillator in a cavity that contained black body radiation could only change its energy in a minimal, uh, in, in a minimal increment e that was proportional to the frequency of its associated electromagnetic wave. Yeah, so this oscillator or heat or uh, vibration of, uh, of charges or, or whatnot is uh, yeah, they're pretty much intra intricately linked. Yeah, so uh, it's basically uh, it when Planck's law considered it as, or considered the energy emitted is only in increments, uh, th then this resolved the, uh, yeah, this resolved the problem of, of the ultraviolet catastrophe predicted by classical physics or that Rayleigh Jeans law. This discovery was a pioneering insight in modern physics and is, is of fundamental importance to quantum theory. So the law, uh, every physical body spontaneously and continuously emits electromagnetic radiation and this spectral radiance, or in other words, wavelength divided by frequency, um, oh, I mean wavelength or frequency, not divided by, wavelength or frequency uh, spectrum of emitted radiation. Which is again similar to ours. Ours is just a, a energy density per a volume of a body. B describes a spectral em emissive power per unit area per unit solid angle or the angle of projection for particular radiation uh, frequencies. The relationship given by Planck's radiation law given below shows that with increasing temperature, the total radiated energy of a body decreases, and the uh, and the peak. I mean, uh, increases. Yeah. So the total uh, radiated energy of a body increases. And the peak of the emitted spectrum shifts to the shorter wavelengths, as I just showed. Everything gets shifted to the left. According to this, the spectral radiance of a body for frequency uh, v at uh, velocity, uh, at, I mean at absolute temperature t, is given by uh, this equation. The spectral radiance of b of a uh, function of uh, frequency and temperature equals to two h, which is Planck's constant, times frequency cubed times it by uh, one over uh, e to the power of h v divided by k uh, Boltzmann's constant uh, times temperature minus one. And this is divided by c squared. So it's slightly different than ours, but this is spectral radiance, and it will, we'll show you how r show you the equation that we use in uh, the applied project uh, shortly. So where k b is a Boltzmann's constant, h is a Planck uh, is a Planck constant, and c is the speed of light in the medium, uh, whether material or vacuum. So again, here's that graph we had. So there's a visible light over there. And remember, this is 5,000 Kelvin. Uh, the sun is 5,700 Kelvin. So it's similar there. But yes, yeah, so it's in the uh, near the visible range and some UV as well. And this is the classical Rayleigh Jaynes law. And it just keeps going up and up. And notice how all the peaks shift over to the left. Peaks go to the left, and it goes up much higher. It's a higher uh, energy emitted. So Planck's law accurately describes black body radiation. Shown here are are a family of curves for different temperatures. The classical black uh, curve it diverges from observed intensity at high frequencies uh, or short wavelengths. So over here. All right, going further. So note that the solid angle. So this part right here. This is uh, over here per unit solid angle. Uh, just to illustrate what, what they mean by that is note that the solid angle has units of stradians and is the angle of the projection yeah projection of a specific area on the surface of a sphere so if you have uh radiation from this uh, zone there if you have this uh w there for uh solid angle then there's an uh, there's going to be a projected area on this uh surface over there and again it's just an equation forward and this is just to illustrate what they mean why? Right, so this is used to quantify the amount of radiation projected from a heat source. There's another image of it. So that, that's the sun radiating 
then this is the solid angle. I um, mean, this is the um, area of the yeah, quantified solid angle that, that they are deriving. Yeah, which could be uh, somewhere over there, like that. But anyways, I don't want to get into that detail too much, but that's just an illustration of of uh, an idea of how they quantify uh, the radiation emitted from a black body or the sun and so on. So note that the equation used by the above Wikipedia article is not the exact same one as the one my calculus book uh, used. Uh, but we see the version used from the following Rayleigh Genes article. So yeah, again, again this one doesn't have the uh, 8 pi in there. And uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so going through the Rayleigh Genes law from the Wikipedia. This one states, in physics, the Rayleigh Genes law is an approximation to the spectral radiance of electromagnetic radiation as a function of wavelength from a black body at a given temperature uh, through classical arguments. For wavelength uh, lambda, it is, uh, we'll have it over here, the spectral radiance of uh, both, you know, since it's a B of lambda of the wavelength at given temperature equals to 2 CKB times T divided by lambda 4, where B uh, lambda is a spectral radiance, the power emitted per unit uh, emitting area. I mean, yeah, per unit emitting area per stradian, that's solid angle unit, uh, per unit wavelength, and C is the speed of light, KB is a Boltzmann's constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. For frequency V, yeah, I don't know why they use V instead of F, the expression is instead BV, this is, this is in wavelength, this is in frequency, so BV uh, of T, equals to 2 uh, frequency squared uh, k, k uh, sub b is subscript b of t divided by c squared. The Rayleigh genes law agrees with experimental results at large wavelengths or low frequencies, but strongly disagrees at short wavelengths, high frequencies, as I showed, uh, as I showed uh, uh, several times. Uh, this inconsistency between observations and the predictions of classical physics is commonly known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Its resolution in 1900 with the derivation by Max Planck of Planck's law, which gives uh, the correct radiation at all frequencies, uh, at all frequencies was a fo foundational aspect of the development of quantum mechanics in the early 20th century. And then going further into that uh, article, says it says in other cases Planck's law is written as you can write this as u of v of frequency times temperature equals four pi over c times uh, uh, yeah times it by the spectral radiance BV of T for, en for energy per unit volume, in other words, the energy density. So that's what we were uh, we were uh, graphing or, or solving in our applied project. In this form, the Planck function and associated Rayleigh genes limits are given by, so you could write this energy uh, density uh, as this, uh, U, e, uh, U of uh, wavelength times, uh, U, U of wavelength and temperature equals 2, or a function of wavelength and temperature, or lambda equals to 8 pi hc divided by lambda to the power of 5 times by 1 divided by e to the power of hc divided by lambda kb uh, times t minus 1. So this is our Planck's law. And then, then, uh, and then the associated Rayleigh genes limits, so when you take the limit or approximation as we did, you get to this 8 pi kb t divided by lambda 4, which is exactly our function that we were given in the applied project. So yes, I mean, so no, these are the equations used by my calculus book in this applied project. So we looked at energy density. And uh, you could also write this in terms of frequency instead of uh, wavelength, and this is the equation. So U of uh, frequency and temperature equals to 8 pi h uh, times frequency cubed divided by C cubed, and then times it by 1 over E to the HV uh, divided by uh, KBT minus 1. And this is approximately equals two when you simplify it uh, to make it yeah, to make it uh, reduce into Rayleigh Jean's law and you get to this eight pi kbt times frequency squared divided by c, c cubed. 